Uh, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about operators that are available in Unity and C Sharp in general. So first of all, there are two kinds of operators we're going to be talking about today. First, there are logical operators, which check to see uh, which values are true and which combination of values are true. Second, there are mathematical operators, which perform operations on numbers. And these two can often get confused with one another. So first, logical operators. These are mostly what you learned about in your geometry class when you were doing proofs. If you remember all those P and Q, P or Q, and the giant truth tables. The first logical operator we're going to be discussing is double ampersand, which is AND. In order for two statements that are linked by a double ampersand to register as true, they both need to be true. Um, so this one is pretty easy for most people to understand. It needs to be this and this. Um, the only real issue that uh, students often have is understanding the double ampersand instead of just using one. The second logical operator is um, the double upward brace, and this is OR. OR conditions are true if one or both of the conditions nested inside are true. So, um, for example, it's raining today or we're going to get ice cream. That entire statement is true so long as only one of them is true. If it rains and you get no ice cream, the whole statement's true. If both happen, the whole statement's true. Uh, it's only false if neither of them are true. Uh, double equals, I don't like to consider this as equal, I like to consider this as is the same as. Checks to see if the value is the same as something else. So uh, this is something that registers is true. If one value is equal to another, is the same as another. And it registers as false if the two values are not the same. Don't think of this as the same as single equals. Double equals are used for logical situations, uh, such as creating conditions for loops or if statements. The next one is exclamation point equals. This is is not equal to. Checks to see if a value is not equal to a specific other value. Uh, next, uh, we have our main four inequalities. Greater than and less than should be pretty familiar to you, but greater than or equal to and less than or equal to in most programming languages are denoted as the greater than symbol and then an equal to right next to it because there's no symbol on a keyboard that looks exactly like greater than or equal to does as you know it from your regular math class. Same thing with less than or equal to. It compares two values. It'll return true if the inequality is true. It'll return false if the inequality is false. So these are logical operators. And next there's mathematical operators. Uh, the four basic ones, plus, minus, multiply, and divide. These allow you to perform operations on integers, doubles, floats, anything that has a number value. The single equal sign is not the same thing as the double equal sign. The double equal sign checks to see if two values are the same as one another. The single equal sign changes the value. So for example, if I wrote x equals 5, I would be changing x from whatever it previously was into that new value of 5. Whereas if I did x double equal to 5, I'm not changing the value, I'm checking to see if it's the same as 5. The percent sign is something called modulo. Modulo is a mathematic operation that's very useful in programming, um, but if you didn't cover math in college, you probably didn't get a chance to actually see it, discrete math specifically. Uh, modulo gives the remainder of one number divided by another. It's useful for finding where a number or thing is inside of a pattern. Uh, for example, if you want to test if a number is even, uh, you can test if you divide that number by two and uh, get 0 back out as the remainder. So for example, 10 modulo 2 is 0 because 10 divided by 2 has no remainder. Whereas uh, 11 modulo 2 would be 1, meaning that that number is odd. This is a really fast and elegant way in programming to find where things are in patterns or to find which numbers are divisible by which other numbers. Uh, in Unity especially, there's many, many more mathematical functions that can be imported or found under mathf. So mathf dot, um, and then there's a whole bunch of functions in there that we're going to be using or that can be very useful. Um, okay, so that's a look at what the basic operators are. Let's take a look at them in practice. Okay, um, so here's where we left off our project with our <laughs> massive thingies. 
Uh, I apparently wasn't feeling very creative that day. So I'm going to get rid of all of these thingies here. Um, I'm going to go to my game manager and I want to look at my intro script. So if I open up my intro script here, um, I'm just going to open this up in uh, Visual Studio. So I have my strings. You can already see where we've been using the equal to editors or not editors, uh, operators, where we're setting one thing equal to another thing. Um, and we have this little debug log that we've been using. I'm going to comment that out. Uh, what I want to do here is show you how to use some of those mathematical operators. So first I'm going to do, let's say, debug.log and we'll yeah, let's do the mathematical ones first. Those are easy. Uh, I want to debug.log uh, two times price. Um, and what this should do, because this is the multiplication operator, is it should just create a small debug statement that uh, tells me two times 11.5. So if I pop back into Unity here and hit play and look at my console, as soon as it's done loading everything in, if I could just be, oh, ah, I changed it in the editor. So two times 100 is what it displays. Now I can replace this multiplication symbol with plus minus um, divide whatever I want. So let's just do divide really quickly here. Again, note that the slash is divide and that the asterisk is multiply. Um, a lot of students have a tendency to want to use x for multiply um, and get confused when they don't see a division symbol that they're used to on the board. So we get 0 0.02 and that's what 2 divided by 100 is. Now, um, last one I want to do here really quickly. So I'm going to create uh, something that isn't a float. And actually, you know, I already have my integer number of copies. So I want to talk about how modulo works. So I want to do number of copies and then percent sign for modulo 10. And that'll tell me what the remainder is if I take number of copies and divide it by 10. So right now my number of copies is five. So this is a number that's less than our modulus. So let's take a look at what happens now. So 5 modulo 10 is 5, which seems strange, but um, what's essentially happening here is if I take 5 from 10, like if I'm looking for how many times, that's, that's a bad description. Um, it, it really has to do with the base of the number. So like if I were counting in base 10, I would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then the next one would be 1, 11. 11 would turn into 1, right? Gosh, that's a really bad description. Let me let me try again. Let's use a different modulus. Um, let's not do 10. Let's do 3. So let me save my script here really quickly. I'm going to pop back into Unity, hit play, and uh, 5 modulo 3 should give me back out 2. And that means that 3 goes into it once with 2 left over, which is why I get 2 back out. Now, if I were to change my modulus, the number that I'm looking for the remainder after division to say six. Six doesn't go into five at all. It goes in zero times. And the remainder of six going into five zero times is five. And that's why five modulo six is five, if that makes any sense. Let me try to explain that one more time. So I'm looking for how many times six goes into five. Six goes into five zero times but there's a remainder left over and that remainder is five, which is why it displays five here. Now, if I change my number of copies to something like, say, 27, 27 divided by six is four with a remainder of three. So the modulus of that is going to be three. So there we go. The modulus operator um, is really, really useful when dealing with patterns, like I said. All right, so now let's talk about logical operators. So first, I have this display info, which right now is set to false. I set this up here last time, but I don't believe we actually went over it. So I want to say if display info, 
And when you just type in a Boolean variable here, something that's true or false, um, this is going to be if it's true. And if I want to check if it's false, I'm just going to put that there. I could also use the is the same as operator. So if display info equals true, then I'm going to copy this and paste that there. So I'm only going to display number of copies modulus six if display info is true. I'm going to save my script, go back in Unity, and see what it tells me. Do, do, do. So nothing displays. Now, if I make display info true, and now hit play, it should show up with that three, because display info is now true. Now, I want to say if display info is true, let's test out the and operator. And. So now, remember the and operator only registers as true if both things are true. Let's say price double equals, because I'm checking if it's equal to something, I'm not changing its value, 11.5 F. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Visual Studio doesn't like comparing two floating point numbers together because uh, it's, it's imprecise due to the nature of floating point numbers, but for our purpose, it'll be fine. So if I hit play, I should only see something if both the price is 11.5 and the display info is true. And now if I change the price to 11.5 and hit play, I should see that three pop up again. And there we go. Because in the AND operator, stuff only registers as true if both of these are true. If I change this operator to OR, oops, and if you don't know where the OR is, it's above your enter key, but you have to hit shift to get to it. It's that straight up and down bracket that looks like absolute value. Save my script. I'm going to pop back into Unity. And if I hit play, the three will pop up again because both of them are true. But if I change one of them, but leave the other one true, it'll still pop up because only one needs to be true, not both. So if I make display info false, the price is still 11.5. If I hit play, I'll still see that three pop up. Now, if I change the price to say 100, back to what it was, and hit play, then nothing happens because they one or both have to be true. And in this case, neither of them are true. So the thing isn't registering as, as true. Now I'm gonna change this from equal to just to show you the last logical operator that we have. Um, actually, I guess we have not equal to that I could use, but I'm just gonna use greater than 11.5. So right now display info is false, but the price is greater than 11.5, which means that when I hit play, I should see that three pop up in my console because one of the two conditions required for the or was met. And there we go. Now there are more logical operators. And like I said, in the math F function, there's many, many, many more math functions that you can use. Any math function you learned about in your math class is going to be present there in the math F function. And pretty much all of them have a use in computer programming. So if you ever feel like asking your teacher, where are we going to use this? The answer is, a lot of the time computer programming, um, which isn't to say that's the only place it gets used, but there's a lot of math in this. Anyway, uh, if you learned something new today, please feel free to give me a like. Uh, if you didn't learn anything new, you can still give me a like. Um, I have my Twitter link in the uh, description where you can check and you can find out exactly when I post a new video. I have a link to the Discord chat. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below. Have yourself a wonderful day.